Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Ali Quorum and Ed Carson here with a breakdown of the action in today's session, Friday, March 15th, and a look at how the week turned out. And Ed, it seems like the market rally is more or less pausing or digesting at highs ahead of some big news coming up next week. Yeah, Fed meeting a couple AI events. Uh, I want to take a look at ServiceNow, Arista Networks, and East West Bancorp. Okay, well, we'll get to those stocks. But first, let's take a look at the major indexes. So the NASDAQ on Friday, closing down a little less than 1%. We have the S&P 500 off about six tenths of a percent or so. Same for the Dow off six tenths of a percent. The Russell 2000 was a bit of a bright spot today, up about four tenths of a percent or so, trying to bounce back after getting hit really hard on Thursday. But let's circle back and start with the NASDAQ here. Ed, seems like there's a, a lot of levels that we're looking at right yeah. here. Yeah, you could talk yourself into almost anything by just looking at this. Yeah, we're, we've fallen back. Uh, we've gone below the 16,000 level, uh, below the 21 day line. You could argue that now, even though we had this big move on Tuesday, which suggested we just basically had a nothing pullback. But now it looks like that's all just part of you know, sort of a sort of a pullback pause. Mm -hmm. We're back to sort of where we've been for the last few weeks. And so on the one hand, uh, you're going to see a lot of bases forming as a result of this, you know, back from February 12th, even or February 9th, February 12th. So uh, but on the other, there's been a lot of fake out breakouts uh, or fake out buy signals. And we're going to look at a couple of those today. They aren't done. But so that's so that's the situation it makes it a little tricky in the short run, long term. Uh, a pause would be, you know, constructive. Maybe now if you could pause for a little longer, you could then see, you know, now there'd be a little more room for the market to run because we're not extended from the 50-day line. You know, there'd be maybe just a new basis. But we'll mm -hmm. see. We could always get a deeper pullback, uh, right. I think, that, you know, going forward. Yeah. I mean, a lot of us have been looking at the July, August 2003 NASDAQ market precedent, and we've been in a very strong power trend of that has not taken many breaks or many pauses. So seems like we're due, but we also could have been saying that for a while now, uh, but we'll be ready either which way. And as you mentioned, Ed, a lot of headlines for the market to digest next week that could be catalysts or could be fuel for some declines and a more meaningful pullback. So we'll have to see what we get. Absolutely. Okay, let's take a look at the S&P 500 and the levels here. We're still above the 21-day line on the S&P. Yeah, you're not seeing too much of a downturn. If you want to really squint, you could argue we haven't made a whole lot of progress in the past two or three weeks. But yeah, I mean, honestly, it's sort of trending higher. If this were the market, I mean, I think we'd be saying, yeah, this is really nothing. Uh, basically closed flat for the week. I mean, there was a little bit of flurry. There was a quadruple witching, so there was a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. But down just a smidge, uh, pretty tight action. So we're seeing tight action or trading that's sort of consolidating over a few weeks. You know, that could be very constructive, uh, you know, uh, you know, as as if we exit that on the to the upside. Yeah. Okay. Let's now take a look at blue chips. Here's the Dow also moving sideways for the last couple of weeks, right around the 21 day line, still holding above the 50 day line, but it's been catching up to the action. So yeah, I mean, if we go sideways for another couple of weeks, if we do get sideways action, it would give time for not only new bases to form, as you've mentioned, Ed, but also just for these moving averages on the indexes to hopefully catch up a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, especially on things like on the NASDAQ and S&P, where it felt like every time we took a break, then we'd have one good day and we were extended or already or on the verge of it. So that would be that would be the upside of, of a longer time like we did a couple of months ago when the averages sort of paused for several weeks. Mm hmm. Yep. Okay. Let's take a look at the IWM ETF. This tracks the Russell 2000, again, trying to bounce back after a pretty ugly day on Thursday for the week, down about 2.2% here and right around the 10 week line. I mean, it's not too far below the 21 day line. It's holding the 10 week line. Look, we bounce back. Everybody says, yeah, this was a really, this was a nice shakeout. This is great. You know, we'll just have to see. I was sort of, there's been some unpleasant action in the past couple of weeks, starting with that reversal day, like last Friday. So we'll have to see. We're still above that level. We're below the December high. So you can imagine more basis forming, but you can also pretty easily visualize a lot of stocks that have broken out 
that would have been coming back into their bases. And that's what we've seen. Yeah, for sure. Okay, next on our list, let's take a look at the 10-year treasury yield. A lot of movement in this this weekend to the upside. Hot inflation data, and it's even worse, it's with some weak growth numbers. So it's like all of a sudden, instead of like the Fed having this, you know, Goldilocks economy, now it's like, well, it's a little trickier situation. The Fed is going to be coming in next week with those inflation and reports in mind. They might scale back how many rate cuts they want to see from three to two. It, the market a few weeks ago was thinking we were going to get six or seven cuts. So uh, that's one reason why the market is that the Treasury yield has been coming up. And uh, one reason why the market's been a little bit of uh, having a little bit of difficulty in the past couple of weeks. But you know, I, all in all, I think taking this in stride relatively well. Yeah, we'll have to see what that messaging is and how the markets react. Okay, let's take a look at some notable sectors. We like checking in on software. Here's IGV down 1.6% for the week. On the day, though, it was a rough day. Uh, And this week, it was kind of all over the place because we had the group moving on Oracle earlier in the week. And then today, really coming off on Adobe, it seems like, Ed. Yeah, and so that's the thing. Stocks, you'd have to, they, they are going to move with their sector. They're going to move with the market. And that's why it's so important on, on that to, to recognize that. So while there was, that was another reason. Not only was it a sideways market, but you have these big daily swings, especially on individual sectors and stocks. So yeah, uh, there was a lot of buy signals on Tuesday. It looked like, here we go, here we go. And we're going to look mm-hmm. at one very soon that looks a lot like that. Yeah. And then did this. Uh, so it could bounce right back, but also shoot Adobe. Adobe hasn't even been a super leader, okay? And that yeah. knocked it really hard. Uh, imagine what NVIDIA and Microsoft, who were just giants by themselves, if they have anything that's seen as negative or not living up to expectations, you could really see mm-hmm. the software and chip sectors go down. On the other hand, good news could definitely get them going. But mm-hmm. uh, chips, chips, which didn't look as good earlier in the week because of that NVIDIA reversal from a week before, uh, that one's holding up. It seems a little better, sort of an orderly pullback to the 21-day line. Uh, I mean, oh, there's a down week. I mean, but as you <laughs> mentioned, haven't seen many down weeks on yeah. the market, especially on yeah, chips. Man. I mean, hard to get too upset about a uh, right. about this kind of move. Yeah, especially with that accelerated rate of ascent that we saw got overheated. So not a surprise to see things come in a bit and would not be surprised if we continue to see a digestion and not a race back up to highs. But again, uh, never say never (laughs) in the stock market. All right. Next on the list, let's go to service now. So you mentioned this. It was looking good earlier in the week. I do have a position here and I'm keeping an eye on these recent lows here, Ed, but a pretty hard knock today on the stock down 4.7% in elevated volume, the heaviest volume since earnings uh, in January. And if we look at the weekly chart here and track price, we close, let's see here, 2.9% below the 10 week line, but again, above the recent low. So a little bit of a tricky kind of nuance there in terms of our 10 week line sell rule there, which I guess could be left up to interpretation. Yeah, and it also depends on where you bought it. You know, you have an earlier spot, so that's a question. But if you bought bought it or bought the bulk of your position, say on Tuesday, right? You know, that might be a different issue. All of a sudden, you're sitting on, you know, probably a a five yeah. percent loss or so, six percent. So you, mm-hmm. that would be a different situation uh, to be thinking about. So yeah, this is again. There was nothing that really happened. All this week was news from other companies. Really wasn't anything there. Uh, you know, uh, NVIDIA is going to have their keynote address from the CEO on Monday night. You know, NVIDIA is a partner with everybody, but including ServiceNow. Uh, that will be a big deal for ServiceNow. A lot of stocks, a lot of business software names got hit today. This has been a real leader, ServiceNow, mm-hmm. but you don't, you know, uh, it is at a very delicate spot uh, mm-hmm. in, in the coming days. So definitely, definitely should be paying attention to this one if you if you only got a really you know, make yeah. some decisions or not like, you know, I- you know, in the next week. Yeah. And we do now officially have a flat base for this one after today. Correct. That is correct. A lot of flat bases. And again, that, re- that's the positive about this pullback. Yeah. Really, this thing is that because we're sort of where we were around February 9th, February 12th, now we're seeing, there's a lot of f- new flat bases uh, that, you know, if you check open stock ideas uh, this weekend, there will be, you know, a number of stocks like stocks near buy points, and there'll be a lot of new flat bases in there uh, from today. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Next on the list, let's take a look at ANA. This is Arista Networks holding up a bit better. We did get some support at the 50-day line earlier on in the week, Ed, and I do need to disclose I own this one as well, uh, but it looks like we are getting a base formation officially here too. And just like we saw support on the 50-day on the daily chart, we're seeing support at the 10-week on the weekly. Looks a lot like be better than the software names because the software names sort of like like software and the Googles out there, they have to prove that they can actually make money with AI. They're spending a ton of money to do it. Now can they make anything out of it? But for the hardware companies like NVIDIA, Arista, it's like, for the short term or the midterm, they're going to make money off of this stuff. So that's not that same kind of panic. It held up well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it gets above these levels. It made it. It was a. It was one of the quietly one of the better performers in the S and P last year. Acting well again this year. Uh, strong growth out there. A lot of really good fundamentals. So yeah, maybe that could be an early entry, especially after after Monday and after the address. See what happens there. Uh, you know, nice to that that it held the twenty one day line. So, showing showing good action here. Yeah. Okay. Last but not least, we're gonna switch gears here a little bit outside of tech. Oh, I also want to mention Anet was today's stock of the day. So check out and maybe you mentioned that. Uh, oh. Ed, but yeah, here's the stock of the day article for your perusal, everyone. And of course, it's on the homepage of investors.com. But last but not least, outside of tech, let's go to East West Bank Core. It is looking pretty orderly with the pullback action here, Ed. Yeah, pretty orderly. This is again, one of those fake outs. It's not it's not done. Okay. It looks it certainly looks better than service now. It's holding holding above the prior old old buy point. It's holding the 21 day line. Uh it just came up and it's come back down. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that's happening. That's just it's gonna happen to sideways market. Sometimes you have a violent sell-off, or sometimes you have this, and maybe we bounce right back. Fed meeting is obviously going to be important. Uh the regional banks have actually held up very well despite some there's been some bad news this year, but the market sort of felt like, no, that was contained to one particular bank, not this one. So uh, if you bought this on the breakout, you could still be holding it, you know, here if you if you want, and maybe it can bounce right back. Uh, but definitely bears watching it goes below the 21 day line, you know, fairly decisively, mm -hmm. you probably want to be getting getting out of that position, or at least scaling out a fair amount, because you know, you're starting to rack up the losses uh, from there. But there's a lot of regional banks that look like this. Uh, and this could be an area that bounces back and offers an opportunity uh, for investors. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Ed. Now let's talk about the battle plan for the week ahead. Although we have kind of woven it into our discussion <laughs> yeah. thus far with all of the headlines that are going to be coming in the week ahead. So investors need to know how to prepare for all of that. It's prepared like, you know, let's, this is more of a practice, not game time in the sense like in the sense of the sideways market is terrible because it lures people in. It, you know, there's all these signals like, you know, service now, the other ones where you get, you get these places and then it comes back down and it's hard to make mm -hmm. headway. But, you know, but you want to prepare because there are going to be more bases, you know, whether it's new bases forming or pullbacks or stocks breaking out, pulling back and then showing possibly moving out again. So. I would you know, be working on that uh, and you know, just check, check on that. It's probably more of a time to be holding. If you have some losses that are mounted up, you may want to take care of that. But it seems to be a holding environment rather than, than taking a lot of action until we get a uh, more decisive move from the market, uh, maybe in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you, Ed. And thanks everyone for tuning in. That is it from us for today, but we will be back with more starting Monday morning on ibdliveinvestors.com slash ibdlive for all the details on that. And then of course, we'll see you back here on Monday after the close.